Hey, beautiful people. This week we are taking a look at the Motu Traveler MK1. This one, this one's a little worse for wear. You know, it's from 2005, a year when the Kyoto Protocol went into the effect. Star Wars Episode Three pissed everyone. I think Demi Moore adopted Ashton Kutcher, but most importantly, they released this piece of kit, this blue magical box, which it's a pretty nice piece of kit. You get a bunch of front panel information followed with hardware MIDI in and out. It can be bus powered, and that's kind of brilliant. If you have a battery pack, that's actually a standard cable connection. So that's there and uh, plug it directly into the mains. On the back, there's a gang, and I do mean gang of stuff to play with. You have your 96K AES CPU, you have Firewire pass through, World Clock, ADAT, ADAT Sync. Haven't seen one of those before. Spitif in and out. Then you have six outputs, uh, one and two being just your main. Those are reassignable though. And you have four line ins that will be five, six, seven, and eight, and four combo jacks. Ooh, push knobs. Those are nice. And the main reason I picked this one up, rack ears. Yeah, it's not completely smashed to pieces. Let's take it for a spin. On the interface, uh, there's a bunch of stuff to play with, but let's start with just a world clock, clock source, fader view, opticals, in and outs. You have bus mix options, even the ability to kind of copy and paste some of the stuff in here. It, it, it can be weird, but the presets. Presets is great because in standalone mode, you can use it as a line mixer. That's brilliant. And you have four banks for every preset that you want. But first gain, pen, solo, um, that's just your plus six. And if you want to easily create stereo pairs, there's an option for that. And of course, gain works as expected. You can move around with a cursor and adjust them as needed. Okay, let's get this set up. The first thing you're gonna have to do is add, well, you're just gonna be copying a lot of stuff. You, there's a gang of things that you just want. Well, let's be honest. You need to get rid of sound dice and just for good measure, make sure you get rid of HDA Intel and HDL Kodak HDMI. So you will be using the fair drivers and not the ones built into also because those are limited to 256 buffer. Let's cut it on though. We're gonna be using Cadence. We're using Firewire as the driver because we've added the correct things to the blacklist. This is capable. Should we try it? Because it is capable of 192. So let's do 192 with a buffer size of 128. Let's see if it starts up. Of course it starts up. Look at that, uh, block latency not 0.7. Now this comes with a bit of a penalty. We take a look at Cadia. While we still have our MIDI, all we have available are um, analog in and analog out. So if you're gonna be recording at 192, be aware of that limitation. But how about we dial it back to something remotely sane? This is, this is what I record at 48K, 128, period buffer three, just, Standard, standard basic, you know, nothing fancy in the settings. And we will launch it. That's going to give us a block latency of 2.7 and KTM. Now I don't have ADAT enabled on the unit currently, but if I did, it would be there along with the SPDIF and AES, followed by, you know, your phones and analog one through eight in and out. This. This is kind of the neat part, Fado Mixer. If you're unfamiliar with it, with Firewire devices, a lot of them have internal routing, mixing abilities, and the Motu Traveler MK1, no exception, none. Now, having all the digital front panels really helps out here because you do have access to everything, including gain, pad, you have your boost controls for your line ends, um, Solo mute per channel. You can even see that it's reporting that, yes, I have some setup. That's why you see minus 64, 64. It's creating a stereo pair. And you can set your mixes. You have mix one through four for each banked setting. And you can set destination outputs. You have control over a phone volume. Main output. Again, I don't have optical enabled on this, but you could set that. And it would work just fine. And even from Fado Mixer, there's your AES-CBU, 
Spitif and your eight channels of ADA. What we're seeing here is just a 15 minute torture test. This is the Lightning Schemecast Weekly, Weekly Daily Wednesday studio session from Ondoor 5. What we're trying to see is if it will generate X runs recording six channels during a 15 minute period. It's not a thorough test, but it will at least show us if it's going to be workable in the future. And this is recording at 48,000 with a buffer size of 128, giving us a block latency of 2.7 milliseconds. And you can see the buffers are staying roughly where they should be, almost right at 100. And the DSP load is hovering slightly over 12%. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, boys and berries, hey, this is the low output Golden Age D2 large diaphragm dynamic microphone. Now, you normally notice down here, thereabouts, you'll see this plugged into like a preamp or a Fethead, a Cloud Lifter, a CL1, something like that. Not this time. Not this time. This is plugged directly in to our little, well, this is our large Smurf box. The little Smurf box is down there. The second blue unit in my rack. If I put one more blue thing in this rack, James Cameron's going to show up and insist on filming it. Something I've been keeping from you so far. This, this traveler is able to put on 73 dB of gain, which means by itself, this little critter, this little $150 critter, will work with your Golden HD2s. It will work with your uh, Shure SM7Bs, uh, your Rhodes, um, PR40s, PR30s, anything like that without the need for a preamp or, I don't have one handy, a cloud lifter or a fed head. And it can genuinely deliver 73 db of gain because the first thing I always do when I plug in an interface is I wind the gain up a little bit because it's never enough to completely even drive this mic. This mic requires somewhere in the neighborhood of about 55 to 56 um, db. You know, a sure is going to need about 60, but it's never enough to completely drive it. This, I cut it up to about three quarters of the way and I was clipping in the red. Currently, Currently, I have this around 32 dB, which this has got a hair trigger on engaging the um, 20 dB pad, which I accidentally tapped. That's why I had to do a little bit of an edit to figure that out. But that's pretty neat. All of this gain is completely usable. It's transparent. Listen to it right now. But let's try it out with the OSP and the classic trusty AT2020. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the OSP High Performance DL330 Professional Instrument Microphone. It is a tiny, little, adorable dynamic microphone. You can think of it as a slightly lower cost Shure 57. Not by much, but I like the sound of it slightly better. And finally, we have the classic AT2020 condenser microphone, phantom powered. You know what you love it. You probably have one in your closet or you might still be using one right now simply because they're cheap and they get the job done. Plug directly into the Motu Traveler MK1. And there we have it. You know, I was completely surprised um, the big discovery from the Motu Traveler MK1 was that whopping unnatural 73 dB of gain on offer from the preamps. That, that has what low output dynamic mics crave. All of these interfaces, out of all these interfaces, there's one remotely close that can do 60 flat out. This can do 60 all day long, and it's still got room to go. And these are quiet preamps, even maxed out. And that digital precision trim marketing. 
It just allows you to adjust in 1 dB increments. That's very nice. Also, you have access to the mixer with Fado Mixer that you can control and it stores, or you can just do everything in the front panel if you can get accustomed to that nightmare six knob push turn interface. You will be reading the manual to figure that out. Guaranteed. Now, again, that gain comes without noise penalty, period. You don't need a preamp. You're not going to need a cloud lifter, fat head, or a CL. It, nothing like that. You just plug directly in. You're good to go. That right there just sold me on it. Um, now, the front panel volume meter, you can kind of see it in the background here. That's actually accurate for once. For once, you can use it. I mean, welcome to digital recording where yellow is the new red. And what I'm looking at on a K20 meter, frighteningly close to what this thing's giving me on the front, which makes sense considering this thing was built in Genesis to be portable. So you have all the information, all of the tools and everything available on the unit itself. So good job on that. Um, standalone mode, mixer mode. That's brilliant. Uh, you'll notice that the 24 channel mixer is completely gone from this rack because that's this guy's new job. I can switch between profiles and just turn it into a line mixer for, you know, music, game audio, or the black magic audio that I need from DaVinci coming out of a uh, black magic capture card. And it works, then I can hit a profile, boom, kick it over, and we can go into a recording mode. That's really nice. Um, let's talk about cons. I'm going to be stretching here. I guess, in all fairness, depending on what you're in the market for, this is a FireWire device. It does not work with the ALSA drivers currently in the kernel. Now, it does. It does, but it's the... Low as you can go is 256, and that makes it useless for anything real-time. I mean, you're just not going to like it. So you're going to be using the Fado drivers. That, in turn, you're not going to be able to use it as a sound card, which you shouldn't be anyway. But everyone's like, no, the interface is also my sound card. Why is it doing weird things? Well, think about it. So it is FireWire. But you can pick up a FireWire card. The one I recommend is the TIT chipset. They're $24 to $35. You can get them all day on eBay. There's one listed in our Amazon store. If you just need something to search for on the internet in your area, use that. They work. They're PCIe. Buy one. Brilliant. Um, hundreds and hundreds of hours on multiple interfaces. Completely stable. Um, they're going to be beat up. This is another real con. Okay. We, we got to look at that because these are portable units. The reason I personally jumped on this one is because I saw rack ears. Rack ears are a sign of there's a better than non-zero chance that it's lived its life in a rack, which even in a gig case where it could get bounced around, but more likely it was just shoved in something like this and it did its job. If you do find them, you're probably not going to get rack ears for it. It's going to be portable. I mean, it's something you could put on your desk. I mean, if you have a CRT monitor, you could probably put it on top of it. It's a little deep, but um, there's a much higher chance of it's been tossed around, moved around, you know, banged up quite a bit. Even with the rack ears, you can tell this particular specimen hasn't been abused, but it's definitely been worked hard. And, you know, things have been done with it. Uh, but it's still one piece. So that could definitely be a con. But you got to consider, when these re released, they were roughly 795 pounds in 2005. That was about $1,400 with the 2005 exchange rate. Feel free to check my math on that. I'm guessing, kind of. So it's good to be able to play with it for, you know, going price. Which What should you expect to pay for one of these? Anywhere between 120 to about $150, which is a great, fantastic deal, really, when you think about it. I'd recommend it. Um, and th it sounds fine. It works fine. It does everything I need to do, and I've used it for a couple of shows so far. And I haven't had any problems with it. I mean, I've 
thought, I thought at least for our shows that the M Audio 2626, we were just done. I'm like, nope, doesn't get any better than this. It did, mainly because audio quality, just as good. Plus, I can just come directly in with this microphone. And then it has the ability to function as a standalone unit and also a line mixer, which allowed me to free up a bunch of rack space because that mixer, go back and watch a previous video, is being used for two inputs, you know. So I'm going to say pick one up. It, it just works out of the box. I haven't had any problems with it. Fado Mixer, it's there if you don't want to... Um, play the home game with the Adventure Time controls on the six knobs because that gets a little bit of a nightmare until you wrap your mind around it. Uh, if you've ever dealt with like guitar pedals and stuff like that, you, you you might be able to decrypt it. But even I had to like bounce over to the manual. I'm like, what exact how? Okay, so to do that, turn that one two times, press that one three times, and you know, spin around in the chair, and there we go. Yeah. That's it, man. Uh, I'm excited. I'm glad I bought it and might even buy another one. I was a little disappointed that only the Traveler series, and again, it makes sense, are pushing 70 plus dB of gain out of the preamps. But you're not going to have extra gear with you. You're not going to have your interface plus another preamp and or, you know, even something for phantom power, um, like a cloud lifter. You need to be able to do it all in one unit. So, yeah, this is probably going to be the only Motu device that I personally buy. There's that. Hey, but I do want to thank each and every one of you people who make this show possible. That is um, pretty much our patrons at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Smooth segue. But hey, look at them. Look at them. They're even censored. It's terrifying. Dude, uh... All of you are awesome. You keep us from, you know, having to do ads and stuff like that. And this show I'm just doing out of pocket because, you know, I we do have all of this equipment for testing uh, because of you for the uh, shows that we do. So I wanted to get some extra use out of it. Hopefully, keep some of these devices out of landfills. Um, most importantly, this is really good hardware that you can get for nothing because... 150 bucks. What's one of the little uh, Scarlet like YouTuber specials cost for like one channel input? About the same price. So, yeah. Keep that in mind. But if you have anything laying in your rack that uh, you think would be good for the show, check the link in the description. There is a uh, place where you can send it because I would much rather uh, be able to play with it, maybe repurpose it, and definitely find a new home for it then uh, you throwing it away. That'd be awesome. Cool. All right, beautiful people. As always, get out there. Make something awesome.